the formidable robot. I have to tell you. It's been in my mind for at least seven years. And I'll start here. As my brother was going on holiday, he told me to crash at his house and look after his pets, so I did. He gave me the keys to his house, and then moved in for the following week. At that time, I went in his room and unpack. God, I wish I stayed home but, I have to tell you what happened. I unpacked and as I went to leave the room, something caught my eye. It was a note. It had the following numbers on them. 6715. I was confused at that point. I thought nothing of it and put it back on his bedside table. I think I went to the kitchen to get a drink at that point, I'm not too sure it was 7 years ago, this event happened. All I remember was going in the kitchen and then going into his living room to watch some TV. At this point, I found another piece of paper. I put it in my pocket this time though. I got ready for bed and as I got dressed into my PJs, I remember looking out the window seeing some sort of youth run across the road running away from my house. I thought nothing of it, so I went to bed, but had the strangest nightmare. I was in a field. I remember the dream too clear, as if it actually happened. It was still one of the weirdest dreams ever. It was just a normal field, no trees, no path. Just a giant ocean surrounding me. God, this reminds me too much of liminal spaces and dream core. That's all I remember. I remember getting up and getting ready for college, as it wasn't that far from my brother's house. I walked to the door to leave, but there was a package. I left it on the seat and left for college. If I remember correctly, it had the number 6715 written on the box in neat writing. I told my friend Ross about that dream. He just looked at me with a blank face and nodded. I still find that weird to this day. I wonder what was up with him. I can't really remember more about that day. The next day however, Ross didn't come to college. Remember that package? Yeah, well I wish I didn't either. Poor Ross. At that time, I had no idea what that package was but now I know. It was a DVD wrapped in bubble wrap. The numbers 6751 were there as well. I took the DVD out the bubble wrap. There was a note as well. I was playing with the bubble wrap as I read on. Hi Robbie, it's me Ross. Listen, I'm so sorry. I don't want to give you this but it's too late now. You're reading the letter. My condolences, Ross. I remember feeling lightheaded at that moment. Sometimes I still randomly feel it. I stuck the DVD into my brother's brand new PS2, and it played. To my surprise, it was Ed 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 Ed. This is how the episode played out. It started out with the wacky intro music and the title card, the added, came up. It started with Double D walking back and forward in his room. Messy, messy, messy! He screamed out as he was nervously tidying his room. Quotation marks exist, you know. It was very surprising, but his room was messy. He heard a knock and just like season 1 episode 1, he dashed up and down the stairs as the door kept on ringing. He then ignored it the fourth time. Now, Double D, it's obvious that somebody's playing a trick. Must tidy or poor old mother will ground me. This part disturbed me the most. He wrote on a sticky note and then said the following. Let me see. Why yes father, I shall wash your car. He wrote another note and read. Oh certainly mother, I will do the laundry. He ran down the stairs and then it went to black. It came back on and this time it looked like Double D was in Eddie's bedroom. This time, he sat on his bed with a nervous look on his face. One thing I remember is that in the poorly drawn background, there was a sort of noose-like object. It faded to black and then we were greeted to Ed's room. This time, Double D could be seen in the background, now without a face. That's what it looked like to me. He walked up Ed's stairs and slowly closed the door. It panned over Ed's room for a while. It then panned over his bed where a note said, 6751. We are then greeted with Double D lying on his bed, still with no face. The camera then panned into his face to reveal two black dots. Then, the camera panned over at Double D's table, and there stood three skulls. The first one being the skull that was shown in Season 1 Episode 1. 
The other two were different. One was tall, skinny, and looked silly. The other one was short and wider looking. It laid on its side. It then for the final time fades to black. I got in contact with Ross again. He said that he never said such a thing, and that he wasn't feeling that well, that's why he was lifeless looking. My brother was supposed to return a couple of days later, but I remember my mother phoning me that my brother was in a mental institute. We sold his house as he wouldn't be returning back there for a long while. I took his pets and looked after them. I also went to see him a couple of weeks ago before writing this story. He's doing good but he told me to never ever view the full 22 minutes. I only saw 10 minutes. I dread to think what happens next. He still mumbles 6751 sometimes, but he's still getting better. I also took a screen cap of Double D lying on his bed. I still have the DVD, but I still refuse to look at the whole episode. What a damning fever dream of a story.